Now we will walk through how to create tables in WData the simple way. Once we're in WData, we can hit the Create button and go to Table. We are prompted with our table input, so we can give a table name. I'll call this Demo Table Simple. The description's optional. We recommend that you fill this out wherever you can, just to make it easier able to tell what your table, what kind of data your tables are storing, as well as what purpose your table serves. As we mentioned in our last video, we have two types of tables that we can have. There are fact tables and dimension tables. Fact tables are tables that store numerical data, typically, whereas the dimension table may store something like a hierarchy structure, etc. So we'll select fact for this particular table. Just one thing to note in WDA specifically, there are some limitations in terms of the rows and columns that you can have in a table based on the type that you specify. So it's always helpful to read the documentation to um, ensure that you're making any restrictions that are there. Our folder, we'll select our YouTube demo folder. You don't have to select a folder, but we find that it's helpful to organize your WDA components, your tables, your queries, all of that gets stored within the same place. So it's helpful to organize where your queries are versus where your tables um, and organize our fact tables in, in a set of folder structures versus the dimension tables. The next item here is adding columns from the source. So in our last video, we showed you how to manually add columns. It's WD has a great feature where you can upload a file and it will take our first pass at entering the name, the column ID, the, the data types for you based on the data that it sees. The reason that I say it takes a first pass is because you will want to review the, the data types, especially to make sure that, um, that it got it right. So here we can specify a file to upload as well as the delimiter. Note that our delimiters are comma, tab, type, or semicolon. If you are populating this table with, um, like, from a chain, let's just say, commas and tabs are the only two supported delimiters over there, so it may be helpful to create your file with a comma or, or tab delimiter and ensure that your chain has just a comma or, or tab. Next, we can go to our location to upload a file. So this is the same file that we used for the HTTP connector that we showed a video on. You can check it out if you haven't seen it. And then we'll click this add columns button. What this does now is this takes the file that we had and it creates a column for each of the columns in that file. And then this pulls directly from the header of that file. So you wanna make sure that first row of that file contains the column names, and by default it'll populate the display name and the column ID as the same thing here. You can go and update these if you don't want to see underscores, for example, instead of spaces and, and so forth. Then back to what I said earlier about WData taking a first pass at the data types. So in this source value field, this is the first uh, data row that's that's pulled back as as an example, and it shows you okay here's the here's the value that's in here, and then here's the data type. For something like an ID, we're typically not going to have decimal places in here, so it may be helpful to make this an integer or a text rather than uh, a decimal, and just make sure as we said in our previous video that you're paying attention to the data types here because when we start creating queries and we create parameters for those queries, we're going to want to make sure that the data type of the parameter matches the data type of the table. Otherwise, we're going to run into, into issues. Employee name, it properly said, is a text. The salary is a decimal. That's that's good because it is possible that, you know, someone's salary, you get a X percent increase from one year to the other. It is possible that there are cents in somebody's salary. Um, so we'll want to make sure that's a the age, unless we're counting half birthdays, quarter birthdays, etc., 
the age will be an integer as well. So we can go and change that and we'll hit create table. Now, once we create the table, we're prompted for the ability to upload the data from the file to the table, which we'll do that just to show you what that looks like. Whenever you put data in the table, you can also create tags and populate those values. Typically, I avoid using tags and I try to, you know, if, if there's extra information that's needed, put it in a column rather than as a tag because you know, your tag might be something like this is my latest data set what happens when a new data set comes in <laughs> well, now that's the latest and you know, your tag no longer um, holds true so I typically try to avoid using tags but that's just a matter of I'll hit this add data button and what we'll see off to the right here is that our file is going to appear and we're going to get uh, a new the, the progress. So as this is spinning, it's uploading the file and populating the data. Once we see this green check mark, we know that the data was loaded. There is a table preview button at the bottom over here where it shows the first few lines of data. We only have one row in that file that we uploaded, but um, it will see here are the different columns that we have where Kiva generates uh, some system generated columns on every table. There's a tags column, there's a file name column to show you the name of the file that was uploaded. There's a timestamp when that file was uploaded for you know, audit purposes. And then there's a user ID field, which is a hashed version of, uh, of who uploaded this. So that way you have you know, those audit logs of who uploaded the file, when, what was the name of the file, and what's the, 